May is the month when your garden is alive and there are a lot of things to do in your garden. So sit back and enjoy this May 2020 episode of California Gardening. We will begin with a garden tour. We will look at all the harvests we made. We have some things for you to do in your garden and finally we'll look at some cool gardening products. So let's begin with the garden tour beginning with the container garden. This is our patio area that gets a lot of sun and we moved a lot of containers from the corner along the wall to this patio area. And as you can see it fits in very well with the aesthetics of the garden. The first plant we have is called the black nightshade plant and it produces berries that can be dried and consumed. It has a lot of medicinal properties and is very good for your health. The next plant we have is called turkey berry and this is also a very unique plant. It produces fruits that are not really very nice but are good for your health. And we have two eggplants. On the left you see the black beauty eggplant and we also have the amethyst eggplant. We have two pepper varieties. On the left you can see a special variety of the Thai pepper that we have been growing for quite some time. And on the right is a bell pepper variety. We also have some Anaheim chili peppers growing in our containers. We have pumpkins. These are four pumpkin plants and the idea is to grow them along the sides of the wall once these plants grow a little larger. And we also have fenugreek. Fenugreek greens are not the best plants to grow during the heat of the summer but they are still doing okay. Our husky cherry red tomato plant is growing quite well and it has produced a lot of tomatoes and you'll soon see how many tomatoes we harvested from this plant. And it is now loaded with tomatoes and is looking pretty good. We also have the Nombo giant okra. These are giant okras that we are growing in this container on the left. And we have some corn plants on the right. Now I didn't have a lot of space for these plants on the raised beds. So I put them in the container. We also have some plants along the bench area. There are two plants here. One is the piper beetle leaf plant. And this grows very well in this wide container. You just have to make sure you water it enough and keep it moist. And it loves the heat of the summer. We also have the mint plant. The mint plant was transferred into this container and has since been growing very well. We also have our dwarf Meyer lemon plant. This is an excellent container plant to grow and will thrive in containers and will produce a lot of lemons for you. And on the other side we have the jasmine plant. There are two varieties of jasmine. The common jasmine as well as the pink jasmine that's a vining plant and the pink jasmine is going to take over this trellis once it grows and these are excellent jasmines they smell great and it keeps your garden very fragrant. Now let's move over to the raised beds. This is a view of how our raised beds look like. We have onions and some other plants on the first raised bed followed by mostly okras with some more plants along the sides. Now on the third bed are all our peppers and we have all our tomatoes on the next bed. We are growing eight tomato plants in this raised bed. And on the last bed we have a lot of plants and we'll go over some of these once we take a closer look at what plants we are growing. On the first bed we have onions. There are a lot of onions growing in this bed. As you can see the onions are doing okay. It's been pretty hot here in Southern California. So you can see the effects of the heat on the plants. In the center we have a luffa plant and I've explained how to grow luffa in one of my previous episodes and I'm really looking forward to growing this again. We also have some pineapple cherries on the side and this is the first time I'm growing this plant and as you can see this bed looks okay and that completes our first raised bed. In the second raised bed we have a lot of okras as you can see and on the side you can see some cilantro plants and also some beet plants. Now it's been so hot that the beets and cilantros have struggled to survive. They don't like this kind of hot weather. They are both cool season crops. But we'll still grow them and see how it goes. On the next bed we have peppers. All our pepper plants. As you can see we have several varieties of peppers that are growing. And they have been interplanted with a beautiful flowering plant. And I will come to the details when we talk about planting the peppers in this raised bed. But overall I am pretty happy with the way the peppers have grown so far. 
Most of the years, my pepper plants have not grown this well. But this year, I made sure to prepare the bed well. I'm also feeding these pepper plants worm tea every 10 days or so. And so far, they seem to be doing okay. But we'll see how much peppers they actually produce in the full season. Moving on to our tomato bed. The tomato bed has 8 tomatoes. And as you can see, they are looking great now. It's been about 2 months since they have been growing. So overall, I'm quite pleased with their growth. Some of them are already producing tomatoes. And most likely, June will be the month where we will start getting tomatoes. And you can also see some lettuce plants interplanted with the tomatoes. And that's something we will get to in more detail very soon. Finally, let's look at our last bed. This has a lot of plants growing. You can see the large sunchoke plants. And there are a lot of other small plants here. We have a lot of kale. We have one eggplant. And we also have a lot of taro plants. These taro plants will grow and produce taro roots, which are quite nutrition dense and quite delicious. And we also have some other miscellaneous plants like strawberries and ivy gourd on the back, as you can see on the trellis. So overall, a lot of plants on this bed. So let's now look at our fruit trees. We have the brown turkey fig. This is a semi-dwarf that's growing quite well. Next to that, we have our pineapple plant that's also growing quite well now. And then we have this blood orange plant. I've been wanting to grow a blood orange plant for quite some time. So this is a good time to grow this plant. And we have a papaya plant. Once again, I've been trying to grow papayas for quite some time. And this will be actually my first year growing papayas. And I'll provide some tips on growing papayas very soon. We have a guava plant right in the corner. And I chose this location for the guava plant so that it has ample room to grow. And this also doesn't grow very tall. It grows more bushy and more spread out, so it's easier to harvest the guavas. We have our dwarf Cavendish banana plant right next to it, which is also growing well. And this only grows to about 5 feet before it starts producing bananas. We have three curry leaf plants. Since we consume a lot of curry leaves, I made sure that we have a good supply of curry leaves throughout the year. And they are also flowering now and they will produce seeds quite soon. Next to this, we have our Washington Naval Orange, one of the best oranges you can grow in your home garden. We also have a Moringa tree. This is the same Moringa tree we were growing in our container for quite some time. This is the Kishu Mandarin tree. And as you can see, it's growing quite well and should start producing mandarins from next year. And next to that is our Mulberry tree. These are the long black mulberries and they grow quite well. Followed by our dwarf loquat tree. Now most of our trees are dwarf or semi-dwarfs and there's a reason behind that. You do not really want a lot of large trees in your garden. Next to this is our serene area or quiet area where we are planning to put a Buddha statue in the future. And as you can see here around the area, there are a lot of greens, a lot of flowers quite close to each other. And hopefully we'll get our Buddha sculpture soon and this area will become really nice and beautiful. We also have the Parfinaka pomegranate on the side. Followed by a pineapple plant as you can see this is a different variety. A tree rose just to add some color. And then we have our avocado tree. This is the dwarf avocado. It grows quite short and still produces a lot of avocados. We added a grape plant here and the idea is to put a trellis for the grape plant. These are the green grapes. And we have the Mexican key lime tree in the corner. And this will also give us some shade in the corner while producing limes. And another grape plant. This is the red or purple variety of grape, the lollipop grape. We have our gold nugget tangerine tree here. One of the best tangerines you can grow. That is the gold nugget tangerine. We then have a dwarf mango tree. As you can see, this is quite small, but has now started bearing fruits. And you can see the fruits are getting larger. We have the bay laurel tree surrounded by two night flowering jasmine plants. The bay laurel tree leaves are used as a spice and it's also a beautiful tree 
that gives a nice look and shade. We have the cherry moya tree, as you can see, looking good, followed by another pineapple plant. I may replace this with some other plant in the future. We have another moringa tree on the side, followed by our Arabian guava tree. The Arabian guava tree was one of the best guavas I ever had. And I had one plant left, so I got the plant along and I planted it. We'll see how this one grows. We have a blueberry bush right next to that. And right next to that is the goji berry bush. This is a superfood and this is the first time I'm trying to grow this plant. If you have grown this plant, let me know in the comments box below. And then we have our mulberry tree again this is the long black mulberry followed by the basil plant or the holy basil plant so this completes a tour of our garden let me know if you have any comments or suggestions regarding the overall layout or how the garden looks like and now let's look at all the harvests we made this month beginning with blueberries we had one blueberry bush growing in our garden and it has endured quite a lot because it was transferred into the container back in the ground and it still produced a lot of blueberries. I'm quite happy with this blueberry plant and I'll continue to grow this in the garden and see how it performs year over year. We were able to harvest a bunch of blueberries for quite some time from this blueberry plant and it was just growing in this small container for now and has hence been moved into the ground as you saw in the fruit tree tour. And these blueberries are absolutely great. They are sweet, delicious. Next we have our mint plant. Our mint plant was growing quite well and it was time to harvest some mint. Now mint will keep growing. You just have to chop off the tops of the mint stalks and they will keep growing. What I usually do is I cut the mint in such a way that there's a lot of space between the plants and mint will grow very quickly once you cut it back. And this is actually one of the ways to keep your mint growing is to keep harvesting it. A lot of people grow mint and they do not harvest it and the leaves turn yellow and they have diseases and insects on them. So a good idea is to just keep harvesting your mint once in a few days. And there are a lot of things you can do with mint. You can make mint chutneys, which is grinding up mint and shredded coconut. And it makes a great dish that you can eat with rice and tortillas. And look at the harvest. It looks amazing. Fresh mint in your garden is pretty good to have. Moving on to peppers. We had several varieties of peppers growing. This was a special variety of Thai peppers. Now these peppers actually look like the banana peppers. They are not very hot as well. So I'm not sure if uh, this was just marketed as a Thai pepper or if this is indeed a different variety of the Thai pepper. But if you have any insights into this, let me know. But these peppers are quite good. They're not very hot, not as hot as the Thai peppers, the, the dark green Thai peppers, but they still are very good to eat. And this plant did yield a lot of peppers this season. Moving on to pineapple, our favorite fruit to harvest during this season. Our pineapple was now quite yellow and ready to harvest. And as you can see, it looks beautiful. And there's another pineapple actually growing on the plant. The bud just emerged and we're going to cut open this pineapple to show you how it looks like. Now in my previous videos of growing pineapples, I had requested some techniques to cut the pineapple and thanks to everyone who contributed and posted links of some videos on how to cut pineapples. And although I tried to do it as good as I could, let's see if this one works out. So we remove the top and the bottom part of the pineapple first and then we just remove the skin Vertically, as you see here, just remove the skin and don't worry if your skin is still there. We can still remove it on the second pass. But the first step is to just remove all the skin from the sides. That will leave all the thorns exposed or the eyes exposed. And this should be pretty quick. As you can see here, there is a little dry area of the pineapple, which we will eventually cut and throw. But we are first just removing the skin of the pineapple from the sides. Now, once this is done, you can keep it aside 
and our next step is to remove the eyes of the pineapple or the thorns which make it very uncomfortable to eat so I tried to locate eyes that are in a straight line and I just made a cut a 45 degree cut from each side to get rid of the eyes or the thorns and this worked out very well as you can see we are wasting minimal flesh of the pineapple and it still does a great job of removing all the eyes of the pineapple the thorns so that this can be eaten so a lot of good videos that you all shared showing how to cut a pineapple that was very helpful although I'm not an expert at this but it looks like uh, this pineapple was cut in a much better way than the previous one and we lost very little flesh of the pineapple during cutting and whatever was lost went back into the compost and this is the area of the pineapple that was a little dry as I mentioned we're just gonna cut this out and throw it not sure what happened there and homegrown pineapples are really good really tasty really delicious and this is something that I highly recommend all of you to try growing is a pineapple plant at home it's a very pretty plant very good looking and it's something that I highly recommend everyone to grow in their home garden and this was that extra skin that I was talking about you can always remove the extra skin later so now it's time to cut the pineapple you're going to be cutting these into slices as you can see and they are quite beautiful so yes homegrown pineapples can be smaller than the grocery store bought pineapples but they are very sweet delicious and also very easy to grow in your home garden moving on to strawberries now we had our Chandler strawberry that was growing the Chandler strawberry is one of the best strawberry varieties that you can grow in your home garden it produces really large strawberries and this is currently growing in this shaded area with a lot of plants I eventually will move it out to a different strawberry planter but you can see the fruits they are amazing and now let's look at our tangerines our gold nugget tangerine was growing here for quite some time and it has hence settled down and is producing a lot of tangerines so we're gonna go ahead and harvest these tangerines one good thing about these tangerines are that they stay on the plant for quite some time so it's now May and the tangerines are still on the plant and they're doing well they're holding on which is great to see that they're not falling down on the ground and these are very nice sweet delicious tangerines and as the plant grows this plant is going to produce more and more tangerines in the future and here's a harvest it looks beautiful the tangerines can be eaten raw or you can juice them these are absolutely delicious tangerines and now tomatoes our husky cherry red tomato plant was our only and biggest producer of tomatoes in our garden all our other tomatoes have not grown big enough yet and this tomato has been growing in this pot since quite some time now I believe a couple months or maybe three months and is producing a lot of tomatoes as you can see now the husky cherry red tomato is one tomato variety that I would highly recommend the starting gardener or the beginning gardener to try it's a very easy to grow plant so far I haven't seen any insects or diseases on the plant but I do make sure to check the tomato plant and make sure that the leaves are intact there are no insects or diseases attacking the plant and as you can see the cherry tomatoes they're beautiful very nice deep red tomatoes extremely easy to grow this tomato plant and it produces abundantly so in just a container we have been able to grow this plant and get so many tomatoes here you can look at the harvest it looks beautiful so it's extremely easy to grow this plant just in a container and now let's look at the things for you to do in your garden this month beginning with amending your garden soil now we have our composting bin where we make all our compost if you haven't seen this composting bin please look at the video that I have published in the past where I've shown how to use this composter the tumbling composter which in my opinion is the best composter and I'll also provide links to this product in the comments below the first pinned comment so you can buy one for yourself and what we are doing now is we are collecting our cooked compost from one chamber and this compost is almost cooked you will still see some unfinished compost like that eggshell coming out 
and some other peels, vegetable peels that have not composted yet. But don't worry, this will eventually compost. But if you want, you can just remove the larger pieces and put them back in the other chamber for it to continue composting. And then use the rest of the compost for your raised bed. Now compost is one key thing that you will need to amend your garden soil. Compost is one of the most beneficial amendments you can add to your soil. It has a lot of microbes, a lot of microorganisms that are very helpful to build your soil quality. And when you have good soil quality, you will see that your soil will retain more moisture. It will help the plants absorb all the nutrients very easily. And overall, it does a great job of improving your soil quality and overall plant growth. So we are spreading our compost out in the bed first so that we have an even distribution of compost. Now you could even leave this just as a mulch on the top and be done with it. However, I'd like to push this compost a little bit deeper into the soil. So I'm just using a garden fork to turn the soil over so that some of the compost gets into the interior layers of the soil where it can add a lot of beneficial organic elements to the soil. And once you turn over the soil, you will see that the soil, although looks a little dry on the top, is not as dry a few inches down. This is one thing to note is to not overwater your plants by giving them too much water every day, but just make sure that they are getting enough water as and when they need, and depending on how much heat you have in your area. Now, during the hot weather, you can water your plants every day just to make sure that they are getting enough water because the sun can be too harsh and too hot sometimes and kill your plants, which is why compost is very beneficial to add to your raised bed or the ground because it improves your moisture retaining capabilities. And you can just continue to spread the compost around. I have this mycorrhizae for quite some time. I just haven't gotten a chance to add it to the soil. And this is not really essential, but mycorrhizae are beneficial organisms that will bind to your soil your plant roots and help your plant uptake a lot of nutrients in the soil. So you just need a little bit. I'm just adding a handful here and I'm mixing it into the compost. Now let me know what your experience has been using mycorrhizae. Do you think it's useful or do you think it's just something that can be avoided? Now in my opinion, if you have good quality organic matter, it already has a lot of microorganisms, fungi that are present in the soil. And I think the mycorrhizae is more for commercial growing. But let me know what you think. And after this is done, you can see that the bed now looks a lot better. We have watered the bed as well. And you can also use the same compost as mulch. As you can see here for the pepper plants, we're just adding the compost on the top around the plant. And eventually this will get mixed into the soil once you start watering. So you don't really have to worry about mixing it in. You can even use a cultivator to just mix it in around the plant. But this will help retain moisture around the plant base, which will mean that you have to water your plants less often. Now, vermicompost is another amendment that you can use to improve the quality of your soil. If you want to buy vermicompost, please head over to vermisterra.com and use our coupon code to get 10% off. This is a great quality product and if you're planning to buy it, you can buy it for a little cheaper by using our coupon code. Now we are raking in the vermicompost into the soil and this will ensure that the soil around our tomato plants is of higher quality. It has a good organic amendment in the form of worm castings. And now let's look at how to use steered manure to improve the quality of your soil. Now you can use chicken manure, steered manure, horse manure, any kind of manure. This is a steered manure blend. And I'm using this on our okra bed because I've seen that the okra bed is quite dry and it gets dried out pretty quickly. There's a lot of sand in the soil and not a lot of organic matter on the surface. So we are just going to be spreading our steered manure around the plants. So all you do is just spread the manure around the plants as you can see. And once it's well spread out, you will be mixing it into the soil. Just make sure not to overdo it. Although this is composted steer manure, it contains a lot of compost as well, as well as nutrients from the manure. So all we now do is just mix it into the soil, just a few top inches. 
And the other thing that's happening here is we are aerating our soil. We are making sure the soil is nice and loose around the plants. And this is something that is very essential when you're growing plants is to aerate the soil, make sure there are enough gaps around the soil. And this is what perlite does automatically. It creates those air pockets in the soil, makes your soil light and easier for the plants to push the roots through. Now, once you've added the steer manure, just make sure that every part of the steer manure is raked into the soil or mixed in well into the soil. Steer manure is something that you do not want on the surface. It works best when it's mixed in deeper into the soil so that it can start decomposing and acting on your plants. And it also has a lot of beneficial nutrients and beneficial microorganisms that will add a lot of life to your soil. Now, once you've added the steer manure, it's very important that you add a lot of water. Deep watering is very essential after adding steer manure. So here we are watering our raised beds and making sure that we have at least one to two inches of water in the raised bed so that the steer manure gets settled in and the plants do not get shocked or do not get burned by the nitrogen in the steer manure. So please do not skip this step. If you are adding any soil amendments, once you've mixed it into the soil, it's very essential to add some water, at least one to two inches of water, and make sure that your plants are happy. And now let's look at planting. We are planting pineapple cherries, and we are growing pineapple cherries for the first time in our garden. If you have grown pineapple cherries, do let us know what has your experience been. But looking at the plant, it looked very similar to a tomatillo plant. And it looks like it's going to produce smaller sized tomatillo looking berries that taste like pineapple. So it's a very interesting plant to grow. Once again, I've never tried growing this plant before. So this will be an interesting test or interesting uh, plant to grow in the garden. And moving on to peppers, we planted a lot more pepper plants in the garden. And planting is something that you should be doing with your family. Teach your kids how to plant so that they learn and they can do it themselves. And all we're really doing is digging a hole, which is about one and a half times that of the plant itself, the pot itself. And the first thing we're going to be adding here is worm castings around the plant. And we'll also be adding some fertilizer. This is organic pelleted fertilizer that we use when planting our tomatoes as well. And then just plant your pepper plant just like that. Now, there are other amendments you can add like calcium. But for now, I already added some calcium when I was planting the other plants, so I'm not adding any more calcium into the soil. Now, our pepper plants looked pretty dry and pretty boring in this bed. So we tried to add some color to this bed by interplanting it with a flowering plant. And these plants are called portulacas. The portulacas will add a lot of color to your raised bed while being great companion plants for your peppers. Now, you could technically use any flowering plant. I just found this plant to be very pretty with beautiful flowers. So we'll be interplanting our pepper plants with this flowering plant. And as you can see, it comes in a lot of colors. So when you buy these plants, you get a lot of colors that you can add to your raised bed. Now, this also makes a good ground cover in the sense that it will shade the soil a little bit. It will prevent the water being evaporated from the surface, which will mean increased moisture retention, which is good. So we're just laying our plants around the raised bed. We will be just interplanting it between the peppers. And also these are great pollinators. The flowers are beautiful. They have bright colors and they will attract bees. So you want to keep that in mind when you're growing tomatoes, peppers. Make sure that you add pollinators to your garden. And let me know what plants you prefer as pollinators. I know a lot of you have different choices when it comes to pollinators or flowers in between your edibles. So let me know what your choices are. And to plant the flowering plants, we just dig a little hole and plant it. It's quite easy. And these plants don't need any additional fertilizer or nutrients. They will be sharing the same worm tea that I feed to the peppers every 10 days or so. And that's good enough for them. And when you're thinking about your garden design, just make sure that you keep flowers in mind as well. I mostly like to grow edibles in my garden, but just this step of adding flowers added a lot of color to the raised bed and the pepper bed now looks very nice very beautiful and very different from what it was 
Make sure you water your plants after planting. It's a very important step that a lot of gardeners miss. You need to make sure that as soon as you put the plant in the ground, that you water around the plant, making sure that you fill in all the air pockets and let the plant settle down. Uh, the plants may look droopy for about a couple of days, but they'll be okay soon. Planting lettuce. Now we had our tomato plants growing and there was a lot of space between the tomato plants while they are growing. So we decided to plant some lettuce plants. We are using all-purpose compost. This is a bagged compost by Dr. Earth. And the reason we are using this bagged compost is because we ran out of compost that we were making. So before we plant the lettuce, we wanted to make sure that the soil has enough moisture retaining capabilities, which is why we are using this Dr. Earth Natural Choice Organic Compost. And as you can see, the compost is quite high quality. There are a lot of different varieties of compost and I don't like a lot of compost varieties just because they have too many wood chips in them. This one does have some wood chips but it's not a lot. It's not as much as I think that bad quality composts have. This one had less wood chips. Now all we are doing is adding the compost around the area that we are planting our lettuce. Now remember that once these tomato plants get larger, they will start providing some shade for the lettuce which is good. Lettuce can grow in partial sunlight and although we get full sun in this area, the partial sunlight will help the lettuce grow quite well. You do have to spread the compost around so that it occupies the entire bed. And once again, adding compost to your raised beds improves the quality of the soil. It also helps the soil retain more moisture. And overall, it will let you grow very healthy plants in your garden. And if you can make compost, please do go ahead and make compost. You can make a lot of compost just at home. And here we're just digging the compost into the soil to make sure that it gets mixed in very well. And we will now form our little area, a long area where we will be planting all our lettuce plants. And you can just use your hands to sort of make a channel, a long channel, a long row, where you will be planting the plants one after the other. Here are our lettuce varieties. We have both the red lettuce variety as well as the green lettuce variety. Once again, they're very healthy for you. They have a lot of vitamins and minerals. So it's something that you should be growing in your home garden. Now what we'll be doing for the planting is to remove each plant and just lay it on top of the row that we are planting it on. And I'm interplanting one red and one green variety of the lettuce. And this not only looks beautiful, but also gives you an option to harvest different kinds of leaves as you go from plant to plant. Now once again, you can start these lettuce seedlings from seeds. It's just that we haven't had a lot of time to start our lettuce, which is why we are buying these plants that have already grown into these seedlings. And once you start keeping it in the row, one after the other, you'll get an idea of how many plants you can plant. These are planted about six inches from each other, which is enough distance for these plants. And all we do now is start putting these plants back into the soil. And if you have good quality soil, you can just remove a little bit of soil with your hands and then push the plants in and they should be comfortable in their new home now. And as you can see, we are interplanting one green and one red lettuce plant and it looks quite beautiful. Now at this time, I'm not adding any fertilizers or amendments for the lettuce plants just because we have enough compost in the soil. We also added a lot of organic fertilizer when we planted the tomatoes. So all that should be enough for these lettuce plants to grow for quite some time. And finally, we need to water very well around our newly planted lettuce plants. As I mentioned, watering is one of the most important steps that a lot of us forget or defer. You need to make sure that as soon as you plant, you need to water. And this will ensure that your plants are not in shock and they will grow quite well. And as you can see, our lettuce row, it looks beautiful interplanted with tomatoes they will grow quite well and they have quite a lot of space to grow for now as i mentioned once the tomato plants become bigger they will start shading this area but the lettuce should still be able to grow so we'll see this is the first time we are interplanting lettuce and tomatoes let me know what you think i know some of you had recommended interplanting basil with tomatoes which improves the flavor of the tomatoes but this time we are going with lettuce just because we don't have a lot of space in the garden to plant lettuce and I thought this would be the best place to plant it. 
And now let's look at some gardening products. At your local Costco, you have the calla lilies. These are beautiful plants. They come in various colors as well. And they're available for quite a cheap price at Costco. Now most of the flowering plants like roses and mandevelas, calla lilies, they're all available for a very low price at Costco during this time. So if you have a local Costco, do check out the plants there. And while you're there, they also have great quality potting soil, the miracle Grow organic choice potting mix, as well as the Whitney Farms raised bed and in-ground soil, both of which are great quality soils that you will find at your local Costco this time. So there we have it folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the new California Garden. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up. And I hope you liked how we are growing our fruits and vegetables and you like the layout. And if you have any suggestions, any comments, anything that you want to share, please put them in the comments box below. If there's something that you've learned from this episode, please let us know. If there's something that you want us to work on and improve or add, please let us know in the comments box below. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.